Hey, this is Jurgen Rasmussen. Welcome to the Provocative Hypnosis Vlog. Today's episode is about how to work with people who are going through extreme life circumstances. So uh, I talked to a colleague recently who said, you know, uh, how do you help a, a parent who has lost a child, for example? So what constitutes an extreme life circumstance may vary from person to person, but, but say someone has lost a child or uh, their spouse has left them or they have been raped or gone through a significant trauma or um, they've lost their job or they're charged with a crime or they've been innocently convicted of something they haven't done and they're, they're facing prison time you know um, how do you how do you work with someone like that and I have two kind of orienting ideas whenever I encounter someone who, who, who is in an extreme life circumstance and the first thing is just both for me and and for the client is that you know i can't help anyone solve their life circumstance you know the only thing i ever work with is how someone relates to their own inner experience that's my domain that's my only domain i don't give people financial advice i don't really give them advice on how to raise their kids or whether they should stay in a relationship or not or or my only domain is the person's experience and how they relate to their experience and i'm very clear with my clients that that is my only domain so so when someone sees me all i can really do is is to help them to relate to their experience in a different way and to understand their experience in a different way so a very nice question to sometimes ask when people is you know how do you want me to help you with that which kind of orients them back to experience now the, the second thing is to be completely open and to leave all preconceived notions of what their experience necessarily is on the shelf. So, and the reason I say that is because a lot of clients I have seen over the years have been deeply stressed due to having experiences, thoughts and feelings that they think they shouldn't have and or by not having certain thoughts and feelings that they think they should have so you never know what someone's internal experience is and it may not correspond with what you think their experience likely is or or should be so for example I remember a few years ago, I, I worked with a, a, a man who, who had lost uh, his daughter. And this was a while after he, he, he had lost the daughter, you know. So the, the work we do is, is usually not relevant at a acute phase of loss, for example. You know, then family support and social rituals and all of these things are more relevant you know people usually come to see us down the line now the, the thing for him was that everyone treated him as if he was devastated with grief people would you know hug him and cry and you know show empathy and 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 imply and you know state how devastated he had to be and what a terrible loss this was and then how overwhelming the grief had to be the problem was he didn't really feel it like he he, he, he did not have the degree of grief that everyone around him presupposed that he had to have as a father who had lost his child 
And that became the problem. So he, he, he had some grief, but, but, but he didn't have the intensity that everyone kind of... So, so the, the problem is that he, he felt that he had to fake his, his intensity of grief, that, that, that he had to, to, to kind of pretend and to be this character who was completely grief-struck and, and depressed to, to not be socially ostracized or, or, or to not be... And, and, and that was an extra burden. I, I have met people, for example, who as children or young teenagers have, have been sexually abused by a family member. And for some of these people, they're, they're not necessarily traumatized. It wasn't necessarily a big deal. They often, at least sometimes, haven't felt fear. They've felt confused. They may have had a, a father, for example, who, who did things that he clearly shouldn't have done. But as they grow to become teenagers, they, they, they make two horrible discoveries, right? A, they, they get the concept of sexual abuse and, and they discover that they have been sexually abused. And B, the only thing they hear about and read about is the narrative of, of trauma and hating the person who did it and, and having lost one's self-esteem and, and this being the dominant part of one's identity and all the things one has to do to heal and so on and so forth. And, and then the person goes, you know, I, I love my father. I, I'm not traumatized. And that kind of becomes the trauma. Like, am I some sort of sexual pervert? What's wrong with me? Why don't I hate? Why am I not enraged? Why doesn't my life... I'm happy I have good relationships. In saying this, I'm, I'm not making light of or, or, or trying to excuse people who, who, who molest kids or, or anything like that. But, but, but I'm saying that the, the, the media narrative and, and the kind of politically correct uh, stories we always get about how it's like for people to have certain experiences is a kind of narrow set. And sometimes people don't have the experiences that they think they should, or they have very different experiences. I'll, I'll, I'll give another one. I, I, I worked with a woman a couple of years ago who, who, who had a friend, and, and her friend's son, who was 17, died in a motorcycle accident. And her own son was 17. And her first thought was, couldn't it have been my son? And the, the fact that she had that thought was so devastating to her because it was like, what kind of mother am I? to have such a thought and such a response and what does this say about me and like oh, oh my god and, and she she created so much meaning and significance out of this and it, it resulted in a lot of suffering and a lot of my job was to kind of artistically point her in the direction of seeing that look this thought is completely neutral it's completely neutral it's, it's not a problem it's also a pretty common thought. You know, a lot of parents have had the thought that, you know, my life would be better if my kids weren't around or, you know, maybe in a period of sleep deprivation or like for this particular mother, you know, her son was smoking joints and skipping school and she was tired. This is a completely natural response. So if someone tells you about a, an extreme life circumstance, don't do the empathy thing. Don't cry for them or automatically assume that they have to be devastated. Don't put that burden onto people. That's my best advice. Like, completely open up. Like, pretend you don't know anything. Just completely open up and be completely present with the person and let the person uh, share their experience or ask the person what's your experience D don't lead them just what's your actual experience what was your experience and what is your experience and how would you like me to help you 
then you have something to go on based upon the client's experience with as little content in position from you as possible. So I hope these tips have been useful. If my ways of thinking resonate with you, know that I see clients from all over the world on Skype and also live. Uh, you, you can reach me at provocativehypnosis.com for uh, change work or mentoring. I'm also doing a seminar called No Self, No Problem, May 19th and 20th, 2022, right after this video is being released. Uh, and if you're curious, go to provocativehypnosis.com on the seminar page. I hope to see you there. Thanks for listening.